If you're having trouble finding meaning in your life, then this episode of Fruits Baskets is for you. We started off with Mitsuru trying to get Shigure's manuscript done on time when he tells her he's busy getting takoyaki. On the verge of losing her mind, she runs off to find him when she bumps into a familiar acting person. Meet Ritsu. Toru is immediately able to connect the dots and recognize the striking similarities with the lady at the bathhouse. Go Minasta! Ritsu is the monkey of the zodiac, as we heard the onsen proprietress mention a while back, her own child. And she also can't help but keep apologizing. She has come to Shigure's house in order to meet Toru since most of the Zodiac members already have. She hopes to one day be as confident as Ayame, though Shigure says Ayame's confidence level is beyond what a normal human can reach. <laughs> no. Duh. <laughs> but to start off, Shigure gives her one goal to start moving forward and gain confidence. To stop apologizing. Toru, being so excited to meet and encourage Ritsu with her goal, already instills her with a bit of courage and confidence. Her first few attempts, however, fall flat as she greets Yuki and Kyo, offending them unintentionally. <laughs> she can't help but apologize, feeling a burden and wanting to run away, leading her to bump into Toru, then poof! Yep, you guessed it. Ritsu is a boy, in fact. He's actually worn girls' clothes since he was a little boy. At first, it was to try, but eventually, he realized he felt calmer and at peace when he wore girls' clothes. But because he'll soon be a working Japanese adult, his outfits will be a little problematic. He can't, of course, always dress like a girl. <laughs> After spilling coffee on the manuscript, Mitsuru was so desperate to receive, even ready to take her own life, Ooh. Ritsu escapes to the rooftop. She contemplates her life as she stands on the roof's edge. As everyone watches, Toru makes her way there to talk Ritsu away from the roof's edge. Ah, <sighs> that's right here, man. <laughs> You have to understand that it's okay to not have a reason to live. That it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be alive. <laughs> the nerve to keep on living, experiencing regret, sadness, doubt, and even joy means that the fear of ending things means that there is something you want for yourself. That you want to find a reason to keep living. Ritsu's parents always apologized for him and felt regret that he caused them so much trouble. Toru says that it's okay to keep on living even if you don't have a reason because if you're alive, then that means you can keep on searching for your reason. It's okay to not know your reason for being alive because while you are searching for it, you will keep meeting many people. And you might find your reason to live for someone else's sake. This is what Toru hopes to find. Someone that wants to be with her most. Someone she will want to live for. Toru understands now more than ever that nobody is born with a reason. That it's something you have to find and decide on for yourself. When she was little, she thought that the reason she was alive was to meet Kyoko and give her something to love. Kyoko became Toru's reason to live. Whether it's a job, a dream, or another person, you have to decide for yourself what your reason in life is. It can be vague, specific, stable, unstable, and it can even be taken away, like Kyoko was from Toru. But as long as she is alive, knowing that she no longer has a reason, yet having the nerve to live on and be clumsy like Ritsu, that means that she wants a reason. She wants to find that reason. She knew what it was like to live for someone else's sake. So she continues to search for her reason to live. Someone she can live for, like she did for her mother. After hearing Toru out, Ritsu is encouraged to search for the reason he's alive. He too wants to find someone he wants to live for. Someone that wants to be with him most. That it would be nice to be with someone like that. 
as he walks alongside Mitsuru to get takoyaki for Shigure to finish the manuscript. That's a tongue twister, by the way. Mitsuru talks about how she is also causing trouble and apologizing. Ritsu shares the things he's heard from Toru, this time giving courage to Mitsuru. He's decided that even though he doesn't know the reason he was born, he will continue to live to find his purpose. Because one day there might be someone that really needs him. <laughs> Mitsuru, moved by Ritsu's words, decided to keep on going as well. With the manuscript finished, Mitsuru now looks up to Ritsu in hopes of becoming friends and becoming as feminine as her. <laughs> uh, she then finds out that Ritsu is a boy. Maybe Mitsuru could be the one Ritsu is looking for. I ship it, but will it happen? Hmm. Get subscribed to find out. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that like button if you like this video and check out the playlist for more of my fruits basket coverage. I hope you have a great night, a great day, wherever you are in the world. Again, my name is Brian, and this has been another episode of Brian's Republic watching Fruits Basket 2019. <laughs> we'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.